This is MJ and today I'm going to be showing you how to make our winter bliss toque. This is a really nice warm fuzzy toque and it's crocheted in the herringbone double crochet. I also just wanted to mention briefly a new platform I just heard about called Ribbler. It's absolutely amazing. I'm so excited for this platform. If you want to go check it out just click the link that's going to pop up on your screen and you can see what Ribbler is all about. So to make this hat, we're going to be using two hook sizes, a six millimeter and a 5.5 millimeter hook. We'll be working single crochets in the back loop only for our band and we'll be working herringbone double crochets for the body of the hat. So it's actually a very simple design to make. Okay, so to begin, you're going to take a strand of each make a slip knot putting that on your hook and we're actually beginning with our six millimeter crochet hook and we're working on our adult size we'll begin by chaining 21 and once you have your 21 chains we're going to work a single crochet in the second chain from the hook so there's one two so pushing through your chain grabbing your yarn pulling up a loop yarn over pull through two and just work your single crochet stitches across your chain so once you've completed that you should have 20 stitches now we'll turn and chain one We're going to be working in the back loops only. So here are the V's of your stitch. You're going to take your hook, pushing it down between the V and going through the back loop only and complete your single crochet. So now we're just working the remainder of the band will be working in the back loops only. And I'll just continue working down. And then when you get to the end, you'll turn chain one and just repeat row two. So working in the back loop only. And in total, we want to have 56 rows. Okay, so once you have completed your 56 rows, it should look like this, and your band should be about 16 inches long by about five and a half inches wide. So if you're using different yarn, you may want to check to make sure that your band is the size that it should be. Probably the combination of these two yarns would be similar to a worsted weight yarn. Our mohair is a fingering weight and our bliss is a two but it is a thicker two maybe closer to a three so i would say the combination of the two of them though would be about a worsted weight so now for counting your rows just a quick easy every ridge is equal to two rows so it just helps you to count quicker if you look at your ridges Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two, thirty-four, thirty-six, thirty-eight, forty, forty-two, forty-four, forty-six, forty-eight, forty-nine, 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 forty-n
and you're just doing that all the way down. So 20 slip stitches to join this together. So I'll just complete the rest off camera. Okay, and once you've worked all the way down, we're gonna chain one. We're not gonna flip it inside out because when this is folded, it's gonna come up like this. So it will then hide that seam. Our next step now is to work single crochet stitches around the band. So we want to have equal single crochet stitches to the number of rows we have. So we had 56 rows, so we want to go around with 56 stitches. And I'm just crocheting here over that tail as I go and you will get in a pattern here like for each ridge we're putting a stitch in here and a stitch in here and then we're back to more than the next ridge so sort of for each ridge you're getting two stitches in there and then that just helps you sort of eyeball it as you go around so I'll finish that off camera and meet you up so I finished off with 56 stitches. Now we're gonna slip stitch into the top of that first single crochet to join. And now I'm gonna change to my smaller hook, which is my 5.5 millimeter. And I'm gonna chain two. These are Su Susan Bates hooks. If you go to the blog, there'll be links and where to purchase these. I get asked that a lot, so I wanted to make sure I mention that. Love these hooks. Okay, so now we're gonna begin with our herringbone double crochet pattern. I've used it in a few of my other videos, and I really love the look of this stitch. So we're gonna yarn over, going through the stitch, grab your loop, and now you're gonna pull it through the first loop on your hook. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. So yarn over, going through the stitch, pull up a loop, pull that loop, right through the first loop. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Going through, pulling it through the first, Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Go through, pulling through, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. And as you can see, that will pull your stitch so that it's going on the diagonal, which gives us a really neat look. Once you get going with it, it's really nice. So now I'm going to show you two options with how we're going to work. This is a hat. I'm going to show you how to finish this one up, but this is by turning our work. So we get a stitch going on the diagonal one way, and then we have it going the opposite way because we've turned. So you get this sort of pattern and the gray hat, the first hat I did, I didn't turn. Okay, so this is the look you're gonna get. So your stitches are all going in the same direction because I'm not turning. I'm just keeping going in the round like you normally would work in the round. So I'm just leaving it up to you with what you prefer if you prefer this look or if you prefer this look just work your hat either don't turn or turn now I'm gonna finish working this all the way around and then I'm gonna meet you up for the join okay so I've worked around my 56 stitches I'm gonna slip stitch in the top of the first herringbone double crochet to join I'm gonna chain two and for this hat I'm gonna turn 
Okay, so if you decide that you prefer the look of the gray and you don't want to turn your work, just keep working in the round. No change. But I am going to have this one look similar. I think I really like this look, so I'm going to go with this look for the blue hat. So I'm going to turn and as you can see, here's our chain. If I wasn't turning, I would work into this stitch right here, the same stitch as the chain. So I won't work it there. I'm just going to go right into that next stitch. So we're just again working. Sometimes it can be a bit to pull that through. So I'm just now working my herringbone on the wrong side of the work. So just like I showed you, continue working herringbone double crochets all the way around. And if you are turning, just so you don't make, make sure that you're counting to make sure that you're getting 56 stitches. You want to keep your stitch count the same throughout the hat. So I'm going to continue working around and I'll meet you up again. Okay, so I'm just working around and my last stitch is going to go right in here. And then slip stitch in that first herringbone double crochet to join, chain two, and I'm turning so you can see how this is looking. And then I'm just going to continue working rows until I have a total of 17. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 17 rows. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you on our green hat how now we'll do some decreasing before we finish off the hat. So we'll chain two. Let me just see here. So I am ending row 17 on the right side. Just gonna pull that through. So we are ending on the right side, but we're gonna continue on the right side. I'm not gonna turn. So I'm gonna skip the first stitch, do a herringbone double crochet in the next, skip the next stitch, do a herringbone double crochet in the next. And I'm just gonna repeat that all the way around the hat, skipping a stitch and then working a herringbone double in the next. So I'll meet you on the other side. Okay, so I've worked around in every other stitch and I have 28 stitches. I'm gonna slip stitch to the first to join. So now we have decreased the top a bit and I'm gonna fasten off at this point. So I don't have too much left, but definitely enough if your gauge is a little off to have enough yarn. Of course, you don't have to add a pom-pom, but I'm gonna show you the pom-poms I have. Okay, so here's my camel colored pom-pom and a trick to get your pom-pom looking great is to use a blow dryer to fluff it out. So if you purchase one of the kits, I make a note of that with the kit. So you basically just blow dry it like you are using So it just gets it looking its best. So the pom-poms I have have a little snap. So what you do, if you order one of the kits and get one of these pom-poms, they just snap together. So what you do is you take this piece and you sew it to the top of the hat. So I'm just using some of my yarn. And my needle and I'm just going to seam that to the top. So what you just want to do is place it right in the center and I'm just going to go up through each 
twice. Some of my other pom-poms also have a button where you'll seam to the inside with, and the, the pom-pom has an elastic band. And then that would, the elastic band just goes over the button. So depending on the color you order, the style can be a little bit different. And now what I'm going to do is just knot my ends together and then I'll just weave those so that you can't see them. So then all you want to do is take your pom-pom and you can just snap it to the top. Then you can just remove it for washing your hat. 